Harry Kane. Let's have a look at some of the other stories, though. So if we begin with The Guardian, it looks at US President Donald Trump, who said uh, yesterday the US would not be a migrant camp. Uh, look what's happening in Europe. Trump also accused German Chancellor Angela Merkel of allowing immigrants to violently change Germany's culture. In the meantime, ABC News Online is looking at the hundreds of children who are being kept in what it says are cages at a border detention facility in Texas. The arrest came as part of President Trump's administration's zero tolerance policy over border crossings and has resulted in the separation of families. Other stories now, the Telegraph is looking at the war against cannabis has been comprehensively and irreversibly lost. That's according to Lord Haig, the former leader of the Conservative Party, who is urging Theresa May, the UK Prime Minister, to legalise the drug. On the front page of the Financial Times is a picture of Rudy Stadler, the chief executive of the luxury car maker Audi. He was arrested by German authorities for his alleged involvement in the VW diesel emissions scandal. And then finally in the Times, and everywhere, it's everywhere, and it's not finally at all. England are off to a great start in Russia, having won their opening game at the World Cup. Uh, they beat, as we've mentioned, Tunisia 2-1. This is the captain here, you can see him, Harry Kane, coming to the rescue in the final minutes. He scored both goals, but one was right in the nick of time. Well, we've got Stephanie Hare with us, independent uh, political analyst and uh, commentator. She's back, as promised. So, Stephanie, let's get started. Uh, so, as I mentioned, Harry Kane is on every single front page, but so is Donald Trump on many. And this first story we're looking at in The Guardian is this kind of pointing the finger at Germany, Angela Merkel in particular. Yes. Um, Donald Trump, when he first came into power, his spokeswoman, Kelly Conway, introduced the world to this notion of alternative facts. And we see this here where he is talking about um, crime in Germany being way up, when in fact the reality is that crime it's in Germany it. is at a 30-year record low. But he tells this story and it goes out on certain US media channels where it plays to his base. And this is all about a reaction to the German chancellor having allowed a million refugees into Germany. And this, of course, did lead to a spike in support for the Alternative for Deutschland party. So that has had a knock-on effect in Germany, but not what he's saying. No, it, it, it isn't what he's saying, but in some ways it's, it's easier for him to point the finger because there mm. were events that happened on New Year's yeah. Eve, for example, in, in Germany, um, not this year, but the previous year. There, That's right. There were attacks on women at certain gatherings in, in parts of Germany, and when they investigated it, it was, in some cases, it was mm. in few cases, migrants. Um, yeah. So you can kind of... Uh, you know, fuel the fire, as it were, with those kind of events taking place. But what he was saying was he doesn't want a migrant camp in the US uh, like that scene in Europe. And he was mm. under pressure yesterday because of this story we've been reporting on yeah. about the detention centers in Texas. That's right, and it's an interesting parallel that, the, that you draw there. So with Angela Merkel in Germany having allowed a million refugees in a few years ago, the United States is now seeing a real pressure on its southern border due to a huge spike in crime. We're talking gangs, we're talking drugs, we're talking beheadings and cartels in Central That's America. In Mexico. Exactly. Well, not just in Mexico, it's also in El Salvador, Honduras, Guatemala. So you have a whole crew of people who are fleeing these things and going to the United States seeking asylum, which is legal under international law. But what's happening is that this is, this is leading to a change in policy. The Attorney General, Jeff Sessions, of the United States announced this policy, which was to separate children from parents as a deterrent. He hopes that would-be migrants to the United States will hear of this and decide not to come. And looking at what Donald Trump was saying yesterday, uh, despite the fact that uh, his, his wife said she felt it was not a good policy and also Laura Bush, former first lady and, and mm. various others putting the pressure on him with regards to that specific policy. He's not budging, is he? That's right. It's, it's not just his wife, the first lady, it's the four former first ladies as well have come out against this. And what we really have to understand here is that Donald Trump wants money to build a wall and he campaigned on a promise that Mexico would pay for this wall. And of course, Mexico's not having any of it. So then he wants Congress to pay for it, but Congress doesn't want to pay for it either because they're looking at anything to sort of cut costs. So what we're looking at potentially here is a sort of weaponization of children. These children are being kept in cages. And what he's saying is the only way that we're going to get any resolution about this is if I get money to build this wall. 
but he can actually end this policy tomorrow. Uh, this is, is highlighted as well by ABC News, uh, which has got the detail. I mean, The Guardian's talking about what he's saying about Europe, but ABC News is talking about the conditions that these children are in. We, we don't have pictures of this. Video cameras mm. have not been allowed in, but journalists have been allowed in, and they're reporting on what they've seen. That's right, and ProPublica even released an audio uh, content yesterday of children crying. So we're talking about babies, we're talking about toddlers, children under the age of five being taken from their parents. They have no idea where their parents are. The parents, of course, in great distress. They don't know when they're going to be reunited with their children. And this started back in April, to give you an idea. So, you know, in a child's world, to be separated from mom time. and dad for six, seven weeks with no, no idea when you'll, you'll be reunited is deeply traumatic. And it's, of course, deeply traumatic for the adults. And what's really interesting is we don't really know where the girls and toddlers are being kept. We know where one of the camps are for boys. So the U.S. government really isn't being very transparent or even like keeping track of these kids, which raises risks of child trafficking, children being you know, potentially lost in a system. So it's a, it's a mess. It is a big mess. Um, but one that there's, you know, is in the center of attention right now. So we'll see where that goes. Let's have a look at the Daily Telegraph now. And this is uh, an interview that uh, the former leader of the Conservative Party, William Hague, has done with the Daily Telegraph, where he talks uh, to the Prime Minister to say the war on cannabis is lost. Um, and this is a very poignant issue in the UK because of the plight of a young 12-year-old boy who's got a very uh, severe form of epilepsy and cannabis oil, the medicinal use of cannabis, is seen to be the one thing that stops mm. him having literally hundreds of fits every day, very serious fits that are life-threatening for him. Yeah. And his medicine was taken away at Heathrow Airport. The Home Secretary had to intervene. It's, and it's become a big issue here. Indeed. And what's really interesting is that Lord Haig has, re has reversed his position. He used to be against this. And now he's completely converted and is saying, why don't we be more like Canada, which is looking to be the first among G8 countries to legalize cannabis. And of course, in the United States, by certain states, have legalized that and you can go and buy it at dispensaries and it's even becoming a bit of a luxury niche industry which of course you can tax right so there's even there's a sort of economic argument for this as well but then there's the medicinal argument which is this is really untested in certain areas there are potential unintended consequences of cannabis use and I think that's where the Prime Minister Theresa May is still taking her time on this Quite issue. interesting that the debate should be highlighted uh, by William Hague, and, and I interviewed uh, William Hague many, many years ago um, about the issue of epilepsy because mm. he has in his own family a, a young child, and I think it was his nephew or somewhere along that lines, has uh, died because of an epileptic fit, something that he mm. campaigns about, he feels very, very strongly about. Mm. I think this issue of the 12-year-old boy not getting his medicine um, and therefore having very life-threatening uh, fits as a consequence has you know, brought this to the fore in the UK. So it'll be interesting to see how this goes and where it ends up. Mm. Let's now move on. Uh, we've got the, uh, the story about the Audi chief, Rupert Stadler, his uh, role at Audi. He has been arrested with regards to the emissions scandal. This has seemed to broaden out and the ramifications are still being felt. And Audi saying as well they haven't found someone to replace him. Quite a big deal. Uh, it was fined as well, uh, VW, quite significantly last week as well. I mean, this is not going away for VW, is it? No, and it's one of those stories that, you know, it sort of started and it just keeps morphing and transmogrifying. So this all started because engineers at Audi falsified test results to make it seem as if their engines were emissions compliant. So in fact, these engines have been belching out toxins into the air, which lead to all sorts of spikes in asthma incidences and other respiratory illnesses across Europe. So you'll remember several years ago, we were all being told that diesel cars were environmentally yeah, better. Absolutely. And in fact, they weren't. They were falsifying the results. And now we're seeing an example of somebody, you know, right at the very top being held responsible for that, potentially. Obviously, he's presumed innocent, but the fact that there's been this charges, there's this investigation is really significant. Now, let's move on to the World Cup. And every paper in the UK has got uh, Harry Kane on the front page, who scored both goals, one mm. very, you know, in the first 15 minutes and one in the, in the last few minutes. Um, it was a, quite a nail-biter, wasn't it? It was one of those moments of football magic where everybody's waiting, thinking, is this going to be a draw? And then right at the end, he put it in the back of the net. It's just beautiful. <laughs> and it was a fantastic goal as well. Yeah. A header into the back of the net. Yeah. I mean... 
It was amazing. Amazing. Um, you're not supporting England, though, are you? You're supporting Peru. I mean, that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> but explain why you're supporting Peru. I'm supporting Peru because my goddaughter is Peruvian. She's three and a half years old, and you know, the Peruvian vamos, Peru. fans are so enthusiastic. <laughs> yes, they Those are. that have got to uh, Moscow, many of well, them. Well, it's the first time in 36 there. years. I know. So, so it's fantastic. Going for, for the Peru. underdog. <laughs> are you enjoying it in general? Watching it, the various matches that have that have played so far. I mean, it's been it's been quite an exciting World Cup already, hasn't it? Well, Americans grow up playing football, both girls and boys. So I love playing football, but I also love supporting it. And to be here in England or, every, or in the United Kingdom where everybody's so enthusiastic is great. And then the World Cup just makes it international. So I think everybody's feeling good today. Uh, we've got some uh, pictures of the England fans who just went bonkers after that, <laughs> that final goal. I mean, for absolute uh, good reason. And, um, of course, we're going to look ahead to their next uh, match. It's going to be a really busy day uh, here in, um, sorry, here and in Moscow, of course. Stephanie, thanks very much indeed Thank you. for your time. I just want to